What's up, filmmakers and movie goers? This is the Easy Podcast, and we are on episode 13. I'm Zach Abbott. I have a really bad cold. Along with me, as always, is Eric Thurston. And how in the world do you sound so good, even with the cold? I think the cold you disgust me. It just makes me sound even better, I think. <laughs> so uh, we're going real Barry White today on my voice. Uh, <laughs> so I apologize if you don't like that. Um, yeah. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the awesome animated film Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. But first, uh, Eric, what have you been working on? Well, um, I haven't been watching anything by osmosis. My daughter's been busy shopping and hanging out with her friends. Yeah. So. Um, but I did cave in, and I finally bought the Red Giant Universe. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they had a special. It was like 40% off. So, And if you're not familiar with what the universe is by Red Giant, it's basically a year-long subscription, and you get a bunch of editing tools and transitions and cool light leaks and effects and all that kind of stuff. So excited about tinkering with that all year. Yeah, it's in After Effects, right? Uh huh, mm-hmm. and um, and there's some some plugins for Premiere as well. Uh, but uh, and then I've got Final Draft, which is a writing software, script writing, script writing software, sitting in my shopping cart waiting yeah, for me, just to, waiting to buy it. Yeah, man. Um, I didn't want to talk about it, but I'm going to because I had such a just pos week with uh, oh man sorry sorry to hear that adobe um stuff not working you're building a windows box for the for editing aren't you i I honestly think it has nothing to do with the mac stuff wow really um because the forums and stuff and there's been a just a a a large amount of people on just various different builds and boxes complaining about the same stuff Mm. um like the guy that i work next to he's on a brand new imac pro Mm -hmm. can't even get illustrator to open Wow. Doesn't make any sense. Um, really? He, he was on with tech, Adobe tech support for three hours yesterday, <laughs> even let the Adobe tech support take over his computer and they couldn't figure it out. Oh, snap. Yeah. So uh, I can't get CC19 Premiere to open on some of our boxes. Like, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. It'll open a project and then immediately crash. So I have to open it on a box that the project can open on disable like all the video tracks and then be able to open that in our main edit suite so that we can mix it without video tracks because huh. it just doesn't work. And the thing that's crazy is there's no effects on these videos. They're just straight up videos. Mm-hmm. We haven't even done color on them yet. There's wow. no, there's no motion graphics. There's nothing on these and it, it just doesn't work. So, so the project stack is pretty thin. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's not there's maybe, you know, one layer to the whole thing with cuts and yeah, it doesn't make any sense why. And these are on, you know, a 2013 Mac Pros, but they're 12 core, 64 gigs of RAM, you know, the the dual 4 gigabyte GPUs or whatever they are. And are they running Mojave or High One Sierra? of them is running Mojave, the other one's running Sierra, and then we also have a third box that is giving us issues, but it's a it's a 2012 Mac Pro so the big silver one that they used mm-hmm. to make. But it's got an Nvidia card in it, so it's not an AMD issue because it's happening on the Nvidia systems too. I, I don't wow. know. I'm just I'm over Adobe. It's really they're just really pissing me off lately. So, um <sighs> Man, I, I wish. Yeah, so you're I, talking not just Illustrator because you're no, talking yeah. about make audio mixing the, for that right. video. So, so what, Premiere too. Premiere is, is just it's just garbage in 19 on some of our systems. I have uh, to use 18 on my personal editing uh, computer, and then, um, but an After Effects 19 works fine. On That's my computer. Weird. It's it's just really frustrating. So um if anybody from Adobe's listening, um fix your crap. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it we're losing hours of, of work every week. And I'm sure you're not the only ones. No, I'm not. There's there's pages and pages on forums wow. of people experiencing these same issues. And then we find out the uh the illustrator issue that my my deskmate was having um problems with, he it might be because of a network attached printer. Are you kidding me? Which is like, that's the most common thing a business has is a network attached printer in, I mean, every post-production house has a network attached printer. Sure. That doesn't make any sense why. No. 
I don't want to talk about it anymore. Why? Because it's it. Oh, I'm I'm just trying to think, wondering if it's the drivers that are causing. Who cares? Yeah, that's true. Why does why does your system why does your software require any sort of connection to those printers if you're or require not having no connection? I'm too sick to talk about it. I don't want to talk about yeah. it anymore. It's bumming me out. Sorry. So, um, yeah, I know this is this is great podcasting. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks well, for listening well, to me rant welcome, about Adobe. Welcome back to the Easy yeah. Podcast. Adobe where, you suck. I'm probably well, going to Da Vinci. I'm just. I'm just. I'm so frustrated with it. Uh, anyways, um, well, we we. I'm I'm intrigued now. I mean, I've not been editing a whole lot. I've been editing a little bit on. I haven't posted anything on YouTube, but uh, the the handful of videos that I have edited on Premiere 19. My initial um, go around with it was a lot of crashes, mm-hmm. and then I thought, okay, it's because I'm on High Sierra. I didn't upgrade to Mojave, so I upgraded to Mojave, and I've had less crashes. But that doesn't mean I haven't had you still have any them. crashes. Right. So, but I'm intrigued as as a as a former software developer. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, now. Let, now let's go chase this ghost. Like, what's what's the bottom line? What's the yeah. problem? Which they should have a whole team of oh, people that yeah. are doing that. They just don't care when when they ditched the when when they went to a subscription based service. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, we got you. And now they don't have to work for those customers every year. Whenever they want to send out an update, the subscription base is nice because you get a, a, an update every three months if you want it. Right. Um, but those updates have been progressively being worse and worse every update. Hmm. The last stable update was the last 2018 version that they right. had, um, yeah. which is why we're still using it on some of our systems. It's just, it, it's so ridiculous. I, I don't understand how a company this size can have so many problems with their software. And then they needed to get their head out of their ass because they're this this whole like measurement game with with Apple. I don't care. Like you guys figure it out because people still use Apple. Like if you're gonna offer right. your if you're gonna offer your stuff on Apple products, then it, you they need to work right. It does. And you can't just sit there and blame Apple for that problem. Right. Because I don't know how many programs I download off of just like some website like MPEG Stream Clip that's a 32-bit software that's, that hasn't been updated since like 2013 still works fine on 64-bit Mojave. Right. Like there's no reason for you to tell me that it's Apple's fault. It's not. No. It's it's your own fault for not putting in the extra legwork because right. you, you're butt hurt about the the NVIDIA issue and the Adobe and the Final Cut issue from 10 years ago. Like let it go. Just move on. Right. And optimize your your product yeah. to work on whatever the new hardware is. And, and I mean, that's why, I mean, there's video after video popping up on YouTube that are comparing Final Cut versus Premiere. Yeah. And I actually Final, jumped back into Final Cut. You, you can render the ago. same video. Like if you had the same exact box. Um, so two people that I, that I follow in the tech space. Um, MKBHD, which is Marquez Brownlee and um, Sarah Dietschy. And they did a side-by-side. And this was almost a year ago Mm -hmm. with the new MacBook Pro, exactly the same video file. And um, Sarah, I believe, was the one that was on Premiere, rendering that file on Premiere. And Marquez was the one that handed in Final Cut. And he was able to render that file twice before hers was done in the time that it took her to get one almost done. Yeah. See, that's, that's unacceptable. Yeah, it was. Um, I, and I was like, Oh, be, and I wanted to move over just for the time saving. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're in post-production, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's all if you time. can save time. Yeah. The, I mean, I jumped over to final cut, um, for like a quick project. I was like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to jump back in it. It's been six years since I was on it. I mean, I, I did edit in X. Um, and then I moved over to premiere, but like it, it, you know, I still, I still am not too crazy about the timeline situation there. Um, the magnetic thing, but it did seem to run a lot smoother and never had a crash. Um, and I was putting layer after layer of, of effects and color and, and stuff on it and never crashed once. 
Um, and that's on a, an, on a seven year old, not seven year old, five year old, you know, Mac pro. Yeah. Um, it's just optimized for, for Mac. And I don't, yeah. You know, if you're going to offer your stuff on a, a media encoder, not sorry, media encoder, media composer, um, which is avid for the longest time, they only offered it on windows. Um, and as that was because, you know, they wanted to give the best option and they said, look, um, we're not going to, our team's not big enough. We're not going to dedicate the manpower and the time to go to multiple OSs. And it ran really great on, on windows. So why, yeah. you know, that was just, that was the, the rule was, Hey, if you wanted to use media composer, use a windows machine right now they're on both. But I think if you're, if you're going to sit there and you're going to blame Mac or you're going to blame Apple for your issues, then stop making it for Apple. And exactly. Just, and just go to Windows. And exactly. Then, yeah, because if you're going to offer it, it should work. Well, when you start playing the blame game, then you're, you're, what you're doing is you're sacrificing your integrity. Yeah. Which somebody might go, well, how does that, you know, if some other company, well, you when some other company that you're relying on for their hardware or software or whatever it is. And if you're going to offer your solution on that platform, regardless of what it is, then you need to make a product that works, that's solid, that's well-tested, that's well-developed, that's mm -hmm. well-supported. And if you don't, if you don't put that effort in and you just sit back and go, oh, well, blah, 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 and point the fingers then you're 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 basically degrading your integrity right and and it's real easy to blame apple yeah, well they're yeah, so they're, big and yeah then, and the 800 know, pound gorilla yeah, that's pushing everybody around yeah it's just they're an easy target and i you know i don't want to sit here and say that apple isn't at fault for something i'm sure there is you know something there I, you know i'm not i don't want that to come across as like i'm just this apple fanboy that apple can do no wrong that's not true at all nope um you know that's that's painfully obvious in the the mac mini they just released with a terrible gpu and um requiring you to basically have an eGPU for it which still doesn't support nvidia so that's an issue for me but you know we're 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 10 years into multi-core processing and premiere still only uses one core to render now i know gpu and opencl has taken a lot of of that power but why you know why it you know i why can't i use all 12 of my cores to export out mm -hmm. and then also why why does after effects not use the gpu mm -hmm. why is after effects reliant like it's it's so funny there's little things i can't i can't think of them right now but there's so many little things that like keyboard shortcuts or other stuff that doesn't make any sense in like when you go from Adobe um, After Effects to Adobe Premiere, like why it's not the same on both. Like you're made by the same company, yet it's clearly two completely different divisions that never talk to each other. Right. Which dynamic linking is a mess. It rarely works. <laughs> I've tried it a number of times and I, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just not yeah. going to abandon it. We're just all, we're constantly yeah. exporting EDLs and then importing them into premiere or, you know, just straight up exporting out ProRes to import into premiere and, or I'm sorry, into, into after effects. It's just, it's so stupid. The, the, the abilities and the, the, the things that you you advertise as being great and and working awesome, they better work awesome. And you guys, I don't know why you don't have just thirty a room full of thirty different computers with thirty different build setups, and you're just running them constantly through just four K files and different versions like you know MXF and MP and MP4 and 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 H264. You know, just just well, here's the thing. This is the thing that's going to upset you even more. They do. They have all of that. They have, I guarantee you. I mean, we did when we were at, at Fox NFL. We had that same, you test everything. And we and we were putting um, programs that were on the World Wide Web right. platform. So we weren't. Yeah, you weren't nearly as. In, you're you're yeah, not as specific right. as making sure it works in like 10 different configurations of yeah. OS. And, right. and so they have that. And if, if they're not, you know, if it. And it's a business decision. Obviously, you start with, okay, what, what's the most common configuration? What is our target profile user? And we're talking about professionals here. 
what what type of rig are they going to be editing on or you know doing whatever that they're doing if they're doing color or if they're doing animation yeah, or, or what, just, what, just photoshop yeah and we're okay this is the priority target profile and then they're okay what's the second profile look like and they break those profiles all the way down and that and that becomes a thing as a software developer you're you're like okay how far back compatible are we going to be and so for us delivering products online it was at what browser configurations now right. there's a dozen different browsers mm-hmm. and and even in each browser you have a dozen different versions going backwards. Right. Yes, because people don't always update immediately. Right. Right. So in and and then you have new technologies coming out. Like oh, it's like when CSS three and HTML five came out. It's like the older browsers wouldn't support these the code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it becomes a logistical nightmare supporting all these different iterations. Which is at some point you have to. You have a responsibility to push the new technology right. to some degree, but you also don't want to alienate your 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 user that's on IE six. Mm-hmm. But at some point, you you do have to to not support. Yeah, you have that window that pops up that says this requires exactly. Chrome such and such and and Safari. You know, version, blah, blah, blah. And that's the same thing with software. And that's the, the whole thing with this whole technology thing that's the, probably the most frustrating for everybody, from the users to the developers to everybody in between, is that at what point do you stop supporting something? And at what what point are you pushing the newest, latest technology? Yeah. And there's a responsibility to to educate and help move people along. But there's also a a responsibility to, you know, you don't, it, it, it's. Well, here's the industry. The industry is a bunch of scared, you know, kids that don't want to upgrade their systems because they're working right. Mm -hmm. I I mean, that's our industry. The video industry is, you know, Hey, you know, OS X, Mountain Lion is still running great on my Pro Tools 9. Uh-huh. I'm not going to upgrade it. Right. But here's the thing is Adobe sent out an email at the beginning of the year, and it was like, hey, we're not going to support Sierra or older now, or like Windows 7 and older now. And if you're going to send that out, then you better be damn sure that your Mojave and your High Sierra work perfectly. They should, yeah. Because you're now requiring all of those post houses to upgrade their systems that they're terrified of upgrading because one, your plugins don't always work. You know, some of your plugins that you use all the time, maybe that company went out of business or they didn't update it or it's working fine. It's stable. Mm -hmm. You know, post houses believe in stability. And if you're requiring them to update now that you're, you're going to lose them and they're going to be behind. And then now you're, you're alienating them just because, just because you don't want to, just because you don't want to just support a, two, a two-year-old OS, it's not even that old, right? It, it's ridiculous, I think. So it is ridiculous, and and here's the 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 darker underbelly of that particular is that you have a massive company like Apple, who's the first trillion-dollar company. Adobe is no slouch either, and you they have to be profitable, right? It's a business. So how are you going to continue to get people to to buy products, software, hardware, what have you, if your stuff is super stable for five years, for 10 years? That's well, not good for profitability. No, but you have a subscription base where I can't even get onto my Adobe Premiere if I don't have the internet. Like... I'm sorry, but they've introduced that aspect of it to now. If if I've signed into more than two computers, I have to sign out on my other ones. Oh, well, guess what? I'm in the middle of a shoot in the desert, and I don't have Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Well, now I can't I can't log clips in, in Premiere because I forgot to log out of my other two units. Like it, it doesn't make any sense, to right? Me. Yep. I mean, there's there's 
there's the problem. Therein lies the problem. Like, how do you continue to make the stockholders happy and make the company profitable yeah. going forward when you're in this? In, and we're paying way too much money. It's we're paying lot. way too much money it, to have, the, to have these problems. types of things. Yeah. Like, I can understand if I had 32 layers of something in Premiere and it crashed. I get that. Fair enough, right? One video with one Lumetri color doesn't make any sense. No. That's literally what you're supposed to be doing on a 24-7 basis. Mm -hmm. And you can't handle it. Yeah, that's it's a problem. All right, we got to move on. Moving on. I think our, I, our I think software rant it. our our software rant is uh is now coming to yeah. a close. So anyways, uh DaVinci Resolve is free. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unless you uh want to edit anything higher than Ultra HD, which is uh what 3840 by 20 mm -hmm. 2060 or whatever. Um yeah, dump dump Adobe, dump them. Um this episode not brought to you by Adobe. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, um, what did what did we see? Well, I saw this, yeah, a week ago, yeah, and uh, you uh, you caught the Thursday screening. I did, and it's going to be interesting to see how much you retained over a week. Yeah, because then I went and immediately saw Bumblebee right afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, and then we talked about it. So, um, of course, the movie that we're talking about this week is Spider Man into Spider -Man, the Spider Verse. Spider Man does whatever a spider can, spins a web. Any size catches thieves just like flies. Look out! Here, Here comes the Spider Man. Man. And copyright. <laughs> hey, that's a that's a cover, and there was no music, so we're yeah, fine. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see if YouTube strikes us down. I don't think so. They won't. But um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse animated film. Um, is it the best Spider-Man oh, movie? Oh, dude, best Spider-Man movie, best animated movie ever. Oh, ever. I'm that, going a, that. That's, I'm going there. That's I'm extreme. going there. It is extreme, but I'm thinking I've and I've got three kids. My oldest are old, you know, are teens on the on the older side. So I've been going to animated movies for the last 15 years. And there's been pretty uh, and I'm and nothing against Pixar and DreamWorks. I mean, they make amazing stuff. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but, but you are. Oh, dude, this movie is awesome. Yeah, um, Spider-Man into the Spider Verse is a animated movie from Dis not Disney, sorry, Sony Animation uh, Studios or whatever, and it stars uh, the. I guess relatively new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Yes, um, he's been in 2014, comics. Two thousand fourteen. Okay, yeah. so yeah, a little, little over uh, four years now. But um, <laughs> this movie, uh, the the only good thing to come out of me seeing Venom was seeing the five minute preview of mm -hmm. this, so that I knew I wanted to go see this in theaters. Yep. Um, this is one of the most unique and original and compelling animated movies I've probably ever seen. And not just animated, like structure and everything of just any movie. I think, I think it's an, I think it's probably a movie that only works as an animated movie just because of the, probably the subject matter. And just, um, you know, if it was a live action, it would probably, I don't know if I would buy into it as much. Right. Right, yeah, I think it works. Every aspect of it just, yeah. wor I mean, when you talk about elements that support the story and the way that they came at the story with the creativity that they did, the depth of field in the animation is really amazing. Cool. It took me It took me probably five minutes though, to kind of like get used to it because it's this weird like, Almost like when you have your like when you're watching a 3D movie in the yes. theaters and you take your glasses off, yes. it kind of had that. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, you just get used to it. Yeah. But I thought like at first it's like oh, that's kind of frustrating. Am I in a 3D showing and I didn't know it? But you do get used to it and it's awesome. It, it's really I think it really draws you in to mm -hmm. the stuff that you're supposed to be seeing, which is you know what we what we do with lenses and and focal lengths and yep. and depth of field. Anyways, so yeah, I thought that was a really really great aspect of it. Yeah, the the way oh, I mean just in the creativity of how they they when they introduced the new <laughs> yeah. spider character and they're like, "Well, let's rewind back to the beginning." Yeah. And then they and they showed the comic cover 
of when that person was introduced right. in the, in the comics, which was super cool. It was really cool, and it just it, oh man, it was it was cool because then you're like you felt like oh I'm getting you're getting that character development, mm-hmm. but you're getting it in a in a kind of an in your face way. Right. But it was it was done so creatively, and each one of them is done in like the tone of that character yep. too. So you're you're getting character development via the the tone of those those flashbacks or catch ups or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, and then and the nod to the comics with the the words coming in yeah. and how they yeah. came in that was super cool too. Uh, and I don't want to get into too much spoilers yet. Oh yeah, um, but if you've seen the trail, I mean the trailer yeah, is not spoiler. Yeah, there's quite a bit in the trailer. Um, and the Post Malone Sunflower video has yeah, also got true. a lot of good stuff. There. That, I want to talk about that. The The music in this is incredible. Dude, m- music in movies this last week has been awesome. Yeah. From Bumblebee, it totally drew me in to the nostalgia and the song choices. And just the the current music vibe and that's happening and the current feel of this movie is so present day it's it it yeah. just it just works i mean my daughter and i went and my son's in the hip hop space so you know we're we're into post malone and and drake and, and there's a new new artist that's fairly new on the scene called juice world and he had a song in there and then his song dropped my daughter and I looked at each other and we're like, what? <laughs> like, we, yeah. I mean, we didn't say it out loud because we're in the theater, right. right? You know, we did mount, we're like, it was pretty amazing. And just, to, and then I haven't gone to go get a soundtrack from a movie in I don't know how long. And the is last, it out now? It's on iTunes. The yeah. full soundtrack. The full is, soundtrack okay. is on iTunes. When I saw it, it wasn't out yet. And so we immediately, after walking out of the movie, pulled it up on uh, on iTunes, and we're bumping it in the car yeah. as we're sitting in the drive-through at Dutch Brothers. Yeah, it's not even just the like the I don't know what what you would different how it differentiates the the phrasing for soundtrack and score, but um, the score to it I think is great too. Um, I can't recall who who does the music for it, but um, there's, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. I'm not sure if he's in the trailer. So if you don't want to be spoiled on who the main bad guy is, Daniel Pemberton, Daniel Pemberton, yeah. if you don't want to be spoiled who the main bad guy is in the movie, because I don't know if he's in the trailer, um, skip 15 seconds. Um, Wait, the main bad guy. Yeah. Is the main bad guy in the trailer? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if he is. I don't remember him being in the trailer. Okay, so skip 15 seconds from now. Okay, so Kingpin's score, I, I or his like theme song, I thought was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 booming bass and everything with it, I thought it was really great. So yeah, the score in this is awesome. Um, if you're if you're now coming back in. Uh, I will not say the the main bad guy's name anymore, but really cool. Um, I think the score really stuck out to me, um, and it helped definitely tie in the vibe to each of the, um, well, it's called Spider-Verse. There's multiple universes. Yes. (laughs) So if you you don't guess that already from the name uh, or the trailers, then this, yeah. You're a lost cause, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's clear. That's yeah. clear in the trailer where, when Miles is dragging, you know, Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah. When he's um, like figuring, like they're all scratching their heads, going, "Wait, what? What just happened?" Right, right. Well, um, the the movie starts out with I thought it was a really cool progression of like hanging out with the Miles Morales character, mm-hmm. and then not really focusing on any of the other spider characters until it's a good ways in actually. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they spent, they spent the right amount of time I felt as far as the, the tempo right. and the flow of, of character development with miles. Yeah. And the begin. I mean, even before the spider, the spider man, you know, the spider bite incident. Right. Which I didn't know they were going to, 
put in this. I, for some reason I was just thinking he just had the abilities. And then also I didn't know much about miles Morales. I didn't realize his powers were so different yeah. than the other ones too. Um, I won't get into those. This might be a spoiler, but, um, in the trailer, I'm pretty sure it's in the trailer. If not, um, the universe that miles Morales is in, um, that Spider-Man's Peter Parker dies. And then because of a certain villain's, contraption a bunch of other spider-man characters spider people spider no, not even people i can't even say spider people because it's not <laughs> totally accurate spider characters uh coming through this like wormhole basically and uh end up in miles morales's spider verse this is totally spoilery <laughs> is it really <laughs> But it's in the trailer, isn't it? No, you don't get... I didn't get that from the trailer. I didn't understand how they all came together. I mean, you do see all these different spider characters well, together in the trailer, but... You, that, all right, well, then I'll... Uh, that's fine. It's not too spoilery. It doesn't ruin the movie. It doesn't ruin it. it I mean, they dude, had to come you, together somehow. I don't care what kind of spoilers that we drop on people. You have got... If you're listening to this and you're considering... Yeah, that's true. ...going to see this movie... Just don't listen to this until after dude, you've seen it. go see it. You, you, What we're talking about, maybe you might be like, uh, what? And, oh, it's just... Yeah. I'm um, going to go see it again. Yeah. It's I, that good. I think my, probably my favorite thing about the whole movie is the, the writing in it. Um, mm-hmm. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. The comedic timing and like the, the jokes and the delivery of moments, like it's so funny. And um, the guy that plays, gosh, this is hard to talk about without being spoilers. It sure is. Um, you know what? Okay. You can just give a spo- Spider, Let's just give Spider-Man. A, we're going to give a into spoiler. The we're giving a spoiler yeah, warning hey, now. Go check out Spider-Man right. in the Spider-Verse. We're going to go into spoilers right now. Boop, 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 boop. Spoiler alert. All right. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse spoiler section. Uh, Jake Johnson plays Peter Parker from normal recipe uh, Earth universe. So our, our universe, I guess you could say. And... Um, I thought he was freaking hilarious in having like fat Peter Parker oh, dude. and like <laughs> he, he's so depressed and yeah. like bummed out and he just oh, wants yeah. to eat pizza. Right. And, and he handled it so well. And then he's all curled up in yeah. a ball in the tub. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. The, there's so many moments yeah. like that that are just so quick. Um, but they're so funny. Oh gosh. And then, um, yeah, uh, since we're in spoilers now, I can talk about it. So Kingpin is the bad guy, and um, this is this is my only Leave Schreiber. Yeah, Leave Schreiber. Yeah. This is my only negative about the movie. I think is the art style of Kingpin. Um, in Miles's universe, every other character seems to be pretty grounded, like normal looking. Mm-hmm. But Kingpin in Miles' universe is he's huge. He's the size of a building. Yeah, he's massive. He, it's it's so over the top. It looks really cool, but it didn't to me it didn't fit that world. Yeah, I mean he's Argonaut size. Right. <laughs> he's huge. <laughs> um yeah, he's the size of a mountain. Um and his little head is on his like chest. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> But he has no neck. <laughs> no, there's no neck. It's just a big black square with a with a face on it, basically. <laughs> Which it looks really cool, but at the same time, it, it didn't meet the rest of the stuff. Because like Miles Morales looks pretty normal. Um, yeah. Even the Peter Parker from that universe and just everybody looked really um, normal and um, grounded. Like I said, but yeah, that was the only one that the art direction kind of felt like he was maybe from another universe, but he definitely wasn't. So yeah. Now, yeah, I mean, dude, I don't even know where to go with this because it's, I mean, it, okay, here's a funny, so my a lot of times when I go see something with my daughter, if there's like a, an emotional scene, like she'll look at, like if she's not like getting all misty and teary eyed, she'll, she'll, she'll look to see like. Oh, is dad going to cry? Oh, right. Like, is dad going to cry? Here? Yeah. And so there's a moment where when Miles is being dangled off the edge of a building about to be killed by the Prowler. Oh, yeah. And since we're into spoilers, it's yep, fine. We are. 
And you're like, oh, so, like it doesn't look like there's any way out for him. And there really wasn't. And, and then he pulls his mask and reveals to the prowler who happens to be Miles' uncle. Now, did you pick that up when he went into his apartment? I did not. The first time? Yeah. I did not. Did you? Yeah. You did? Yeah. And, but I think it was one of those things where like it could have been taken either way, that he was still hunting him or not. But it was something about the way that he came into the apartment that I was like, this is his uncle. I knew it immediately. I don't know. I don't know what it was about it, but I think it was. I think it was intentionally done that way, to where like it could have not been his uncle. Whenever the reveal is, but yeah, I knew immediately. I was like, oh man, that's that's going to be his uncle, and that's that's going to be a bummer, a bummer moment later on for sure. Well, I'm not super well versed in that in the Miles Morales Spider Man story, but when when he visited his uncle, you already know that his dad wasn't approving of him hanging out with him because his dad's a cop and he was like, you know, he's kind of chosen like this, not so on the up and up lifestyle. Right. And he's got some shady, you know, he's involved with some shady people or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the foreshadowing is there and, and it's subtle enough to, if you're not familiar with the, with the storyline, it, you, you might miss it. Right. And I missed it. And it, and then, when they go to tag the the wall in you know in the subway, um, his uncle and Miles they go and they tag this this wall because Miles has this really great artistic graffiti style that yeah. you know he his his dad's mad at him for putting stickers all over the city and that kind of thing. <laughs> right, but they hop a fence and the uncle leaps this fence like it was nothing. Yeah. And that was another little piece of foreshadowing that I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And then it obviously develops pretty quickly after that because then you you get the sense that, oh, he's involved with the wrong. Oh, yeah. oh, here's the, here comes <laughs> yeah, the conflict. Oh, he's a really bad guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, but here's the interesting thing: he's a bad guy working for the kingpin, but he's endeared himself to the audience. Mm-hmm. My daughter, and so. You know, he's dangling Miles off the building and going to end him. And then Kingpin happens to be on the ground saying, finish him. And he doesn't because it's his His nephew. He pulls his mask off and, you know, Miles is like, well, they, they have, they, they're maskless and recognizing. And then he gets shot by the Kingpin. And it's a sad moment. Yeah. But even though he's a bad guy, the Prowler is a bad guy, he's endeared himself to the audience, which is great character development. Because I look up, my daughter's looking over at me to see if I'm tearing up with tears in her, like she's totally crying. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at her cross eyed. I'm like, he's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, well, you crying for the bad guy. <laughs> right. But, you know, he, from a personal level, Pulls Miles in and, and is like, hey, you know, I get it. You know, you're kind of under the thumb of your your dad who's has a legalistic righteousness that he wants everybody to follow, you know. And, yeah, it was, a gr- I mean, just, just well done. Like you said, the writing, the storyline, and pulling you in, everything works together. The the art, the the music, you just feel like, yeah, here's here's the conflict of of what our choices are, and I mean, it, I don't know what else to say, but go see. I want. I can we go? Like, we're gonna cut the podcast yeah. short, and we're gonna go see it again. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's great. It's definitely um, like I said last week. You know, it's it's in my top of the year. Um, Which it, I was shocked when you said that. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is an animated film. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely the best animated movie this year, and and it's one of the best films of the year. So totally agree. Yeah. Go check it out. Um, you know, I think, Oh, we're still in spoilers. <laughs> uh, did you stay after the credits? This, this, Oh my goodness. 
Dude, that was so cool. It was a nod back to the 1966, 63. When was the first? I think 67, maybe. Was it? I can't oh, remember yeah. when it was, but. I you, want to say a 66, but uh, yeah. The animated series yeah. <laughs> of Spider Man from the 60s. Yeah, the little nod to. Uh, well, it's now a meme yeah. everywhere. The, mm-hmm. the Spider Man pointing at himself. And, uh, yeah, and they're- yeah, and they're both really <laughs> angry, uh, pointing. But it was great because the dialogue that goes with it is is hilarious. Yeah, because it's so 1960s, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like... It's really funny. That was back when pointing at somebody was an offense. Right. Right? Like, right. you pointed now, and they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. It was great. I, I, think, I think that was a nice little, like, you know, we're not going to give you an end credit scene, but we're going to give you something. You that know, was great. It, yeah, it was a oh, great was really nod good. back to the original. It was cool to see the Stan Lee cameo. Yeah. That was cool. That ha- that hung a little long to me, uh, I think it intentionally, but I was like, oh, man. Yeah. It felt like they may have, you know, Because it's the it first out, cameo since he's passed away. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then, then there was... The, the ending, yeah, had the title, title um, card with, with Stan Lee, a quote from Stan Lee, and yeah. then also talked about... Um, not Steve Ditka. Is it Steve Ditka? Uh, oh, the other guy, um, the other who, Marvel creator who created, who co-created Spider-Man with him. Yeah, Ditko. Yeah, yep. So yeah, Steve Ditko. Um, yeah, they had a little, um, you know, rest in peace thing for them. Both of them, they both died this year. Um, huge, huge comic book icons. You know, Ditko doing a lot of Spider-Man. Oh, stuff massive! And, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty incredible. So yeah. Um, I think I'm, I, I think I'm too sick to continue talking about this. So do you want to talk about anything else about it? Well, you know, it's funny. I do my daughter. Do- <laughs> so my daughter said, wait, cause at the end, you know, the, the spider characters go back to their perspective universes. Still at spoilers, just so you know, if yeah. you're listening again. Yeah. I'm yawning. Yeah. Zach's tired. Um, but Gwen Stacy has this interaction with Miles, and you can see this development of this relationship development. And here's here comes the setup for the, the sequel. S- sequel, right. Because he's like totally attracted to her and into oh, yeah. her, yeah. And she's kind of questioning whether she is <laughs> attracted or not, yeah. and she's still got like some relational issues. Yeah, yeah. And my daughter's like, "Is that it? They're not gonna hug, or they're not <laughs> wait, like you know?" And she's twelve, yeah. And so she was like so wanting to see the Gwen Miles relationship development. That's cool. So yeah. I'm like, you know, it's funny because as a filmmaker, I'm I'm watching her reaction, and I'm I'm studying the things that are landing on her, mm-hmm. you know, as somebody that's in the demographic that it's tar- you know it's targeted at. Um, I mean, it's targeted at nerd. I mean, yeah. you know, um, but seeing her reaction because she's not jaded from working in the industry from being on the front or behind the line or anything of that nature. And so she, it, she's purely consuming this and seeing how it lands with her is pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to the sequel. Yeah. I imagine there will be at least two more of these. I wouldn't be surprised. It made what th- almost forty million the first yeah, two opening days. Yeah, thirty-seven point two or five million the first yeah, it, day it, and a half. It's gonna have a big opening weekend, and then they'll just keep cranking them out. Hopefully, they you know they as in Sony don't ruin it. Yeah, they didn't. They they nailed this one. Yeah, Sony it's, Animation. Yeah. Hats off to you. This is yeah, you so cl- well done. You clearly didn't have any of the other Sony executives in your ear. Because right. this movie is so much better than anything else that these guys have ever put out. So, um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, it's out now. Go check it out. Um, yeah, that's been our our review on it. We don't we didn't have too much to say from a technical aspect because it's all animated. We don't really know that space, but uh, we would like to get an animator on the show sometime. So, which you, we are working on. Yes, we're working on. It. We're not going to tell you who. Yeah, and uh, that's probably going to be our first guest. 
yeah, it probably will be. Uh, hopefully, first quarter of the year. We'll see. Yeah, I'm working know. out the schedule and yeah. the whole. Yeah, so coming soon. Yes. Well, um, I think that's going to be it for this episode. It's a short episode. Uh, I apologize because I'm sick. Um, Life happens. Yeah. But uh, our next episode, we're going to have our favorite Christmas movies. Uh, and then Eric and I are going to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, Putting the gloves on. Yeah. So it's going to be another spicy episode next week. And then uh, we're going to take a week off because it's New Year's and I'll be out of town. and uh, Spending time with family. Yeah. So Absolutely. you guys do the same. Yep. And we will catch you guys next time.